Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides, and I have built a set of mathematical models and sideline that predict various sports outcomes. You'll hear more about the baseball model in the course of this episode. Sets cover six MLB games scheduled to be played on Friday, May 12th, 2023. In case you're new here, check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pickswiththeprofessor.com slash new for some explanations and community rules. Also, if you're interested in projections and picks for every single game, all those A-grade plays, the A-plus play of the day, the Discord chat, the numbers that you're looking for in order to get an A-grade play, all of that's available. If you sign up on Dub Club, cost is under $1 per day. That link is in the show description. Remember that sports are unpredictable, so the discussion on this show projects a typical game does not try to forecast it to a T as it'd be foolish. An impossible goal. We take a long-term view around here and don't get distracted. When the Mets decide to have like the worst game of the season, that was something. If you back the Mets on that one, uh, you know, I told, I told this to the Discord, right? That team's never as bad as their worst game, and they're never as good as their best game. But, you, you know, that might have been the Mets' worst game of the season right there against a no-name pitcher like that and a terrible bullpen and a hitter-friendly ballpark putting up all of zero runs against the Reds. That's going to happen. That's baseball in the long run. It'll balance out, but any individual play, you just never know what's going to happen. The idea being that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as I'd like to see, it'll be profitable every single day. That is an impossible reality for any gambler. I said about long-term views here. If you've been back in those a grade plays, it's been working out well. And try to really highlight the B and C grade plays that I think are worth your time here on the show. And hopefully we can get at least that subset of them going. Got one total that I really like today. And I just want to remind people about the advantage of getting early numbers today for Thursday. It is Thursday for Friday games. Um Made a couple of picks. If you have DraftKings, if you're one of the people that has DraftKings as an available book to you, you come out with lines really early. And I used to beat the the number, the, the sports books out, but they come out with theirs like before I'm even awake, it seems like. And so figured might as well start playing some of those. We locked in the Rangers here for Friday at minus 150 on DraftKings. And by the time now in the afternoon, it's already up to minus 190. That minus 150 was just a terrible price. And there's things like that that we're going to be able to jump all over. Being in that Discord, you get immediate access to those picks. So you know, hey, run, don't walk. Go ahead and lock these. And there's another one we'll talk about later. That same thing happens. So uh, a lot of benefits over there if you're with us on, on Dub Club. You get under $1 a day. Uh, it'll be worth your while. But before we get to today's slate, some quick reminders. Please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. So if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free. And if you turn on notifications, you won't miss any of the college basketball and your college football content that this channel provides. One day I'll provide hockey content uh, as it is. You know, we're still being, you know, maybe a little stitious, not not superstitious, just a little stitious here about, you know, wearing the jersey on the show and, and getting the stars wins here to move them on in the playoffs. So, you know, it's that's just the way we got to do it here. Uh, a grade Monday nine plays will return four units. That is the risk plus win equals four. B grade return three. C return two. And the A-plus play of the day returns five. Uh, got your winner on Thursday, given that, again, that's the sort of thing that happens over on Dub Clubs. You get the A-plus play of the day every single day. Not just the Royals afternoon game on Thursday, but you'll get one of those every day at a great price. <clears throat> but let's get to it. And as always, take what you like and leave the rest. Sadly, no day games here on Friday. Let's kick it off with the night game here. 7.05 p.m. Eastern Pirates at the Orioles. Two teams that have been really good to us. We've backed both of these teams a lot and made a lot of money doing it, so it's kind of hard to go against one of these teams. I think there's some value here on the Pirates at plus 135. Sideline says it should be Orioles minus 134, so just a tiny bit of value, but the bottom line to me is that the advanced metrics suggest that Oviedo should be the better pitcher between him and Kyle Bradish. And the model only has him a couple spots higher. Uh, but when you look at it, you got a pair of guys with upper five ERAs, but Bradish has been, you know, kind of sitting around a five. If you look in, you know, look under the hood, but Oviedo should be more around four. So I think the pirates might actually have the better starting pitching here. Bullpen wise, probably about equal. I can't believe I'm saying that after how bad the pirates bullpen was last year, but the model rates these two bullpens about the same right around league average uh the pirates bullpen's been strong this year the Orioles bullpen the, the pirates bullpen this year reminds me of the Orioles last year uh every year there's there's a bullpen that's going to start off really good really bad 
And most of the time, it kind of comes back to earth. And last year, the Orioles bullpen really didn't. They got, did get a little fatigued at some point down the end. But for the most part, they say pretty strong all season. And that's kind of where the Pirates bullpen is heading, one that we didn't think would be that good. And, and it turned out they're, they're doing pretty well uh, here. And, and the Orioles bullpen still doing pretty solid. Both, both bullpens are solid. That's, that's, a, that's a wash. Offensively, the Orioles are the better team, and they are at home. I think they should be favored. I just don't think they should be favored by this much. It's not a true coin toss game, but plus 135. Offer some value on the Pirates. B-grade play, risking barely over a unit to win almost two. If you want to play a little safer, play it on the run line. You're going to have to play minus odds probably. Um, again, on the to-do list this summer is to build up those probabilities of run line so I can tell you what the run line price should be. Right now, I'd just be making an educated guess. Uh, so that's coming uh, sometime this summer, just, you know, on the to-do list uh, here in the near future. So you can, you can, you can play that run line. If you want to play a little safer, you can split your wager. If you want, a lot of people like to find the plus ones. Those are not a bad idea. It's kind of the cross between you push, of course, if they lose by one rather than winning on the run line, but it kind of uh, can play a little bit safer, give you a little bit of more of an out in case they, they just lose uh, without having to be quite the same steep price of the run line, whatever you want to do with that. I think the pirates are the way to look here. <clears throat> the total in this one is eight and a half model says 9.2 it's not an over pick for me officially it's like one step shy of it and the sheer reason for that is totals are just higher variance and they're just not something that i want to put a, a, a good chunk of my bankroll on personally i want to put more of it towards the spreads where i think we have a bigger edge so I'm, I'm not pulling the trigger on it yet, but if you had to play a total here, over is a decent look. Uh, over 8.5, model says 9.2. We will have uh, not much wind, kind of a cross. It'll be blowing out towards the end of the game, but it'll be dying down to not much. But it will be a warm day to start in the low 80s, closing in the low 70s. Kind of a hitter-friendly ballpark since they moved that left field in. It hasn't really been uh, that hitter-friendly. So, you know, it's not the, you know, the old Baltimore, but it's still probably slightly hitter friendly. And like I said, neither one of these pitchers has been great. I just think that Bradish is worse than Oviedo more than Oviedo is good. It's just, I think he at least can be decent. Whereas Bradish, I just don't have a lot of faith in. So subpar pitching, um, you know, you, you could look over as well. It's just, again, not quite big enough for me to attack, but if I had to, I'd play the over just sticking with pirates plus plus one thirty five. If it gets to plus plus one forty nine, that gets it to an a grade. About the same time here, Braves at the Blue Jays. Uh, this is absolutely a pick I am all over. It's only a B grade according to the value. It's hard to get much value on Spencer Strider. Everyone seems to realize now just how good he is, and, and it's hard to get much value fading Chris Bassett at this point. Uh, but there's still a little bit of value here. Model says should be Braves minus 146. Even if this is up to Braves minus 150, I'm playing this in a heartbeat. Strider is the much better pitcher. Bassett have talked about it. just hasn't quite looked right mostly this season as the pitch clock seemingly affecting him, the advanced metrics he has ERA should be in the low fives, whereas for Strider, it should be around two. Even if Bassett gets into full form like his like his past self was, he's nothing but a average or slightly better than average pitcher. Um, he's no match for Spencer Strider. I know the Braves bullpen hasn't been quite what we thought it would be, but I still project them to be the best bullpen in baseball, that the historical data matters. And, and, and I have a lot of faith in these Braves relievers whenever Strider is done. And while I like the Blue Jays' offense, they are a little bit right-handed heavy, which gives them a slight bit of a ding against the righty. The Blue Jays' offense is just lethal against lefties. I want no part against them against the lefty. But uh, against righty, righty versus righty in this matchup, I actually have the Braves' offense a little better. Uh, I think the Braves should be massive favorites here all over this pick at minus 142. If it gets to minus 132, it gets to A-grade territory. But I'm kind of playing this as close to an A-grade personally anyway. I just I love the Braves here. I love backing Strider. I love fading Bassett. It, it's hard to, to just express just how much of a differential there is between these pitchers. And you can look first five if you want. But, I mean, I, I just I believe in this Braves bullpen, so I don't think you're getting much – uh, much value really in doing that. But depending on what odds you can get, you know, you can always look at that market if you feel like it. Total on this one is 8.4. Uh, according to the model, I'm seeing eight, eight and a half. So it's it priced pretty well. It'll be about 70 degrees to start mid sixties to close. Uh, might have an open roof there at Rogers center. Seems like it'll be a nice night, slight breeze, uh, but a nice night for baseball there. If they want to open the roof up, um, and again, just as an FYI, you know, talk about being able to play those early numbers, but we don't have to play all of them. Uh, this one opened up and the Braves are minus 150 this morning. 
Um, that was when we passed on and just said it's not worth jumping in. Dropped to minus 142. Now it's worth entering the market. So we have that ability by just opening up that time window and, and again, being part of the dub club, being part of the Discord. You can see, hey, here are the four or five games, three games, whatever it may be that day. Let's jump early. The rest of them, let's wait. Let's see what happens. Uh, waited on this one, got an extra eight cents of value. Uh, some of the other ones, uh, like this next one we're talking about here, Cardinals at plus 120. That plus 120 is long gone. It's even money now. And this is when I said at plus 120, let's go. Let's get it. A grade value. Even money. I'm still on the Cardinals at even money. Uh, plus 105-ish. I still think that's the side I'd be on. But it's at it's it's B grade, C grade at that point. Uh, so hopefully you're with us on Dove Club. You already got this one at big plus odds. Even if you got it as it was coming down, you got plus 110, plus 115. You're still getting better value. Uh, so again, you just cannot express enough how how impactful getting better numbers across the entirety of the baseball season can be, and that's what you're getting over on Dub Club with us. Uh, but plus 120, if you got the A grade play here, model says Red Sox win this just under 51 percent of the time, so it's pretty much a coin toss game. Uh, so plus 120 is just great value. And the other play I love on this one's the over. I'm going over 10 at minus 110 odds. Uh, model projects 11.4. You've got two average pitchers on the hill. To average bullpens. Red Sox bullpen might be a little bit better, but you got some good offenses in a massive hitter friendly ballpark. And what'll be a decently warm night in Fenway. Upper 70s to start, upper 60s to close, wind blowing out towards right field, only at five to 10 miles an hour, but uh, that could just help, you know, even more. And again, Fenway, you don't even really need the win because that park is so hitter friendly based off its dimensions and, and the green monster. There's going to be a lot of runs in this game. So I like the over 10 uh, if you miss the boat on the Cardinals. Uh, but if you got both, it's just like a, a, you know, a nice little double dip there for you. Uh, Adam Wainwright's made one start. Did not look well based off of the results, but it's a great reminder that ERA tells you what happened. It doesn't necessarily tell you what should happen or what will happen going forward. The advanced metrics, when you look under the hood there, he actually pitched just fine. Uh, it was just some bad luck there. So I, I think he'll be okay. Not great, though, at this point in his career. Uh, you know, probably just about an average pitcher. Uh, this will be Paxton's first start. So you got a pair of guys who don't have a lot of innings underneath them. That could lead to shorter starts, more bullpen action. Uh, one of these guys can get lit up pretty easily, especially in that ballpark. So a lot of ways to have runs. Don't know what happens. Coin toss game at plus 120 in a coin toss game is something I'm all over every day of the week. 8, 10 p.m. Eastern Astros at the White Sox. Uh, look, I'm going to say something right now on this game specifically that I probably say like five times a year. And that's, you know, I'm actually going to kind of not care about the price on this one. And I don't completely mean that. I'm not playing the Astros like minus 170. Uh, but while we're really price sensitive, 99 times out of 100, there is that one out of 100 times where you kind of look at it and you just say, how in the world is Michael Kopech still in Major League Baseball? And how much longer is he going to be? And I just want to take advantage of fading him as much as we can. That doesn't mean he won't win. That doesn't mean the White Sox will win. There's no locks in gambling. And um, this price is pretty high, but uh, Kopek has a six ERA and the advanced metric state should be up to seven. He's dropped in my rating down to the area of guys that are getting DFA. So I, I just don't know how much longer he's going to be pitching. Uh, seems like he should be outrighted to the minors. Uh, I don't know who, maybe someone claims him. I have no idea his contract status, but I, I just don't know if this guy's long for, for the White Sox organization. Uh, if you'd be around much more, much longer. And so I just want to fade him as much as possible. Sideline says it should be Astros minus 126. I'm playing about minus 135. Again, I don't want to play too crazy a price, and we do need to be considerate, considerate of the price here. Uh, yeah, but gosh, I just, I don't know how many more chains we're going to get to fade Kopech. So I'm going to kind of, I don't want to say with the caution of the win, but I, I, I do think it's worth a small investment on the Astros just because uh, of how bad Kopech is, how bad the White Sox are at this point. Asher's offense not at full health, but JP France now making a second start might be better than the model gives him credit for. You know, it, it, some of these young guys you don't really know. And if he is better than the models giving him credit for, then that makes his price a little more palatable. So uh, even if he's not, that Asher's bullpen has tons of depth and that should help. Uh, and as I mentioned before his first start, which looked pretty good, I, I made the comment there the model tends to handle these young guys by looking at it and saying, does the team need him? How good is their bullpen? How good is the team's strength? And in this case, the, the Astros' bullpen and team strength is high enough that the model kind of thinks, hey, if they're bringing him up, he's probably pretty decent. He looked pretty good his first start. Uh, so minus 135 and back in the Astros. Not a ton of value, so only risking about a unit to win just under a unit. Uh, but absolutely a play I want a part of. Total is 9. Model says 8.9. So spot on on the total. Maybe a little rain early. 
So this one might have a late start, uh, but should be able to finish later, it looks like. Wind blowing in around uh, six to seven miles an hour. Kind of a chilly night around 60 degrees for the most part there in Chicago. 8.40 p.m. Eastern Rockies at the Phillies, uh, or Phillies at the Rockies, excuse me, and, and we don't do this often. Let's back the Rockies. Plus 135, it's B grade. The Rockies offense is kind of coming around, hitting a little bit, and uh, I've long said that the Rockies are a team that is much better at home than on the road. Uh, this year, it's been a little bit of a mixed bag with that, but we have a ton of historical data that just says that when a team plays at cores more frequently, they figure out how to hit there, they figure out how to field there. Uh, they kind of get in a little bit better of a groove there, and, and they have the the best by far home field advantage um, in baseball. And so let's rely on that here against the Phillies team that will be playing uh, their first game at altitude, and that's usually a little bit tougher on the relievers, a little bit tougher on the pitchers. And on top of that, while I don't have any faith in Austin Gomber, I don't have any faith in Tywin Walker. I, the model says Walker's a better pitcher, but – Yuck, if you look at both of these guys. They have ERAs around or in the sixes. The advanced metrics say they both should be around five and a half. I mean, Tywin Walker's got a track record of being a little bit better, but I mean, I don't have any faith in either one of these pitchers, and I, I'm hard-pressed to say one's really better than the other. They're both pretty bad. Um, not not Michael Kopech bad, but, but neither one of them are very good. Uh, the Phillies' bullpen takes a huge hit, losing Jose Alvarado, and all of a sudden drops to below average uh, as he was a massive piece of that bullpen. Uh, offensively, the Phillies still the better offense, but again, the way the Rockies can hit at home, uh, I'm not going to say this is a coin toss, but uh, plus 135 is too high, in my opinion. The B-grade values model says it should be Phillies minus 124. If it were to get out to Rockies plus 143, that would be an A-grade, but at this point, still worth an investment here. Uh, you know, Rocky's a solid home team, especially first game of the homestand. Definitely a little bit of a frisky underdog here. Total is 12. Model says 11. So the model would go under. I'm not playing this under with these two pitchers at Coors. We've seen a lot of games at Coors go like one nothing, you know, or, or, or we've, we've seen one go one nothing this year. We've seen a handful of games, you know, do, you know, three, one, that sort of stuff. That stuff happens on occasion at Coors, but you also get your fair share of, uh, you know, eight to six games. So it's just kind of high variance there at Coors. The totals are a lot of times just my, just my two cents. A lot of times they're stayaways unless it's just a hot day and the wind's blowing out and people just don't realize that the total should be like 15 or something crazy. Uh, otherwise I'm mostly passing on course totals. There's just so much variance with a huge park in the altitude like that. It's just usually not worth the time. So model would say under I'm passing uh, focusing on the Rockies here. I think they got a chance to pull this off and a, make it a nice little plus odds winner for us. And wrapping us up, 9.40 p.m. Eastern Giants at the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks plus 105, a great play for us. Uh, listen, I'm going to start with the bad, which is these are like the two worst teams that we've had all season. We have done terrible on them both. But I'm going to flip to the here's the good news, which is we've been terrible mostly at backing the Giants. Fading them has been close to break even. And we've mostly terrible fading the Diamondbacks, but backing them has been mostly break-even. Um, we have not done a good job of, of backing the Diamondbacks when we should. We mostly faded them when we should have backed them, that sort of thing. And the same with the Giants. We should have faded them more when we backed them. So, you know, the, the thing is, though, that we're not doing either one of those things here. We're backing the Diamondbacks. We're actually playing the side of it that is at least the part that the model's done a little bit better at. So it might give you a little more confidence than otherwise. Otherwise, these are two of the roughest teams that we've had a hard time figuring out. But again, the fact that we're at least close to break even on this side of the table, backing the Diamondbacks and fading the Giants tells me that plus 105 is definitely a worth a play. A grade, again, value, as the model says, it should be Diamondbacks minus 111. They win almost 53% of the time. Ryan Nelson and Ross Stripling, I have zero faith in both of these pitchers. Stripling's been so bad. Uh, the Giants uh, might rush uh, Alex Wood along through his rehab in order to prevent him from making another start after this one. I'm a little surprised he's making this start. There was talk that Wood might even start here, but I'm not sure he, he's up to even like 75 pitches at this point. So um, probably one more rehab start for Wood. And then unless something magical happens, Stripling will be out of the rotation. So this might be your last chance to fade him. He's been bad. The events metrics say it's been bad. Uh, Ryan Nelson, it's also been bad. But the advanced metrics say it's been less bad uh, than Stripling. 
Uh, you know, it's kind of a coin toss with a lot of the variables. I like the Diamondbacks pin, but given the fact that the game's in Arizona, I think the Diamondbacks got a good shot to win this one. This is one of those where I'd make it a coin toss on a neutral, but since we're in Phoenix, uh, Diamondbacks plus 105 is really good value. They should be favored in this game. They've played well this season. I don't think it's a Mirage. I think it's a decent team. Their offense rates out better than last year by um, – close to a full standard deviation. The relievers grayed out by, I think, over a full standard deviation better than last year's team's much improved. So the results they've had, I don't think are quite a mirage. I think they're a solid team. Are they going to win 105 games? No, but they're they're a decent team. At home, plus 105 is a good price, in my opinion. Total's 9.5. Model says 9.2. Would not touch this either way. If I was going to keep an eye on the total, I might play over nine as long as I was getting decent odds, minus 115, maybe, maybe, maybe minus 120, maybe. That's kind of pushing it a little bit, but that'd be about the highest I would go. So if you see something like that, that might be interesting. But otherwise, if you don't have that option and or the number doesn't go in that direction, I would just pass on the total. Focus on my A grade play here on the snakes. That's all I've got for you here today. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Picks with the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can ensure all the sports betting content provided on this channel is dropped right into your feed. Be back again tomorrow with more baseball betting content. Until then, as always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.